On this episode of Pedalbox, we're chipping away at the Thunderbird again. This episode, we're gonna try and put some of this car back together. And we've spent a load of time getting all of this under seal off the bottom of the car. And we've also cleaned down after that and put paint all around the inside of the arches and the inner panel supports for the wings and the bumper supports. Now we've got a couple more of these to do, which we'll show you in a little bit. But for now, let's get on fixing some other bits on the car. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and check out our merch on shop.pedalbox.show where you can get t-shirts, hats and more. Now, although the main thing that we want to get done right now is the brakes, we do also need to clear out some shed space to make room for the VR6 bits that Adrian's going to be taking apart shortly to fix the Golf. And that means getting more panels out of there and onto here. The next thing that we want to add on is more of the inner arch structure that comes out to the wing. And that means duplicating one of the mounting holes from the driver's side of the car onto the passenger side here so that we can start bolting that together. So here's the piece we're gonna be installing. It has three bolt holes, two that we already have fittings for on the car already, and one that we covered up with our new metal that we put in when we replaced the battery tray up here. So we're gonna duplicate a hole to bolt through there on here, and then we can move on to fitting the battery tray. So the piece fits on like this. And we need to make our hole somewhere around here. Unfortunately, these old calipers have definitely seen better days, although they still seal and everything, they probably work fine. There is a lot of goo built up in these little, uh, in these reservoirs here behind the pistons. So we're gonna get in there and clean that out as much as we can. We've also got some new crossover pipes. They connect the two halves of the caliper. Since we've got pistons in both sides, we've got to get hydraulic fluid from one to the other, and they don't have an internal gallery because it's a two piece casting here. But before we can get to rebuilding these, we have got to deal with the 50 plus years of grot that's built up in them. So they're pretty manky inside. There's a lot of grease and what looks like may even be little bits and pieces of rust. So we're gonna give these a good clean up with a toothbrush and some gunk and see where we end up. While Chris is redoing those calipers, I'm working on this inner wing skin. Now this was all bondoed up to make it look like it was reasonably good, but when we took it out, there was all these massive holes and you can see the inside has just been kind of clagged together, beaten roughly to shape and then welded in. So I'm gonna cut this back and take roughly this triangle out from here and shape something up that matches the edge of the panel so that when we hang the wing, it'll be a little bit stronger and look an awful lot better. We're mostly done with our cleanup now. We've gunked everything down pretty good and we've brushed around the whole outside of the calipers with some phosphoric acid to try and take most of the rust off. All there's left to do is pop these seals out, clean the bores out a little more once the rubber's out of the way and then we'll be done. Well, the sun's running away on us pretty quickly now. So the last thing we're gonna do tonight is put these inner seals back into the calipers now that we've cleaned them all out. I've already done the other caliper and it turns out these are actually super, super easy. They basically just fall into place, which I really didn't expect. I thought they'd be a nightmare. Now that we've got all the new pistons and seals fitted to the calipers, the only thing left to do is to fit this crossbar that connects hydraulic pressure from one side of the brakes to the other, just so that we can feed the other set of pistons. Now this is fairly simple, albeit the threads don't go in very well. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, it's not the hardest thing in the world. Usual problem with anything brake related, the fittings never go together very well. So it's quite handy to have a proper brake spanner to wind them in. Now, Hours here, we've modified a ring spanner and just cut the end of it out so that it fits over a brake line. So just gonna pop that through the hose clamp there where it's supposed to be. And hopefully it's located well enough that it threads in without too much hassle. 
Well, we got this rotten piece cut out and it took a little longer than hoped, but I am extremely satisfied with the way this patch panel has come out. Other than accidentally taking the corner off and cutting it a little bit too small, I am extremely pleased for my first kind of proper bent up piece of sheet. I know I did the battery tray before and we've done a couple of bits on the kit car, but really this is the most complicated piece I've ever shaped and actually it fits extremely well. So we're gonna get this tacked in and then sprayed up so it'll be protected overnight because you never know what's coming in the winter. Well, it's taken a couple of weeks to get this finished up and painted, but it is hard to overstate my satisfaction because this looks really, really good, especially compared to what it looked like before, which was just garbage. Massive holes rotten through it. It really did look horrendous. And it's not quite as good as the other side in terms of uh, factory fit and finish. There is meant to be a seam down here, but ultimately this is not a bolt-on bolt-off part. It is meant to be welded together. It's now welded and it's not rotting nor is it full of Bondo, which is really, really good. Now you might notice a small elephant in the room behind me in the shape of our master cylinder, which is once again removed from the system. And there's a very good reason for that, because this is our brake booster. Now our brake booster looks okay in this point. However, if you look at the side here, this actuator, which pushes on the master cylinder, should not be able to rattle. This should move one to one and be attached to the input on the other side. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that the input on the other side isn't even in. It does go into the right place, but it's not attached to anything inside the booster. So we're going to have to try and open this up and see how these connect on. I think this is just meant to be a little circlip, but I'm not sure how this one goes in. There is a fantastic build of somebody restoring a 66 Thunderbird and I have studied his video and unfortunately I can't remember my name but I will put a link to his channel down below because he's a hundred odd parts into rebuilding one of these and all of the information I've gleaned from it has been incredibly useful. Partly stripping down a brake booster which is what we're going to look at later this afternoon. Now we're still missing the brake pads because unfortunately when Adrian put his last order in with Rock Auto they were out of stock. So we've asked Santa for a set of them and hopefully we'll have those early in the new year. But thankfully, because these are four pots, we can put them on empty. And then when the pads do arrive, we can get a spreader tool in there, push the pistons back in, drop the pads in and call it good. So this takes a little bit of finagling to actually get the caliper in place because the, uh, there's a dirt shield behind the rotor here that kind of gets in the way of fitment. So I'm just going to wrestle with this for a minute. There we go. Well, that's a caliper installed. We do still have some old rubber brake lines here that actually look in pretty good condition, but we've had a new pair ever since our 2019 trip to Roadkill zip tie drags that we're going to throw on as well, which we're not going to do right now because we're still replumbing the entire front end of the brake system on this. So we're going to be running new hard lines and everything. So there's no point putting those on quite yet. So this is our brake booster. And as you can tell, it is not doing so well because that's not meant to happen and that is definitely not meant to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is take this back bracket off, which would normally mean removing the split pin on the back edge of this arm. But because this simply freely disconnects, we don't need to do that, which I'd rather it did need to be done. But here we are. So we've got the push rod from the pedal off and now we can take apart the two halves of the clamshell. And we're going to have to try and straighten out this bolt and or replace it with something else if the threads don't cooperate. So I'm just going to massage this back up with a screwdriver to try and get it close to straight again and we'll see what we can do. Unfortunately it is also a flathead on the other side which might make this a little bit more difficult but that's not looking too bad. Well, with a bit of percussive maintenance, that bolt looks pretty straight. However, when you actually look down the front of it, it is so far offset. This has been tightened up so far, it's unreal. Um, and yeah, it almost looks like they're two completely different bolts at this point. So the rubber seal that's on here is looking in pretty good condition, all things considered. I wonder whether this has been rebuilt once before, hence the uh, rough repaint that it's had, but it, it really doesn't look too bad at all. 
So now we've got the ring off, we just need to separate these two halves. And this, fortunately, is actually really nice and loose. So this should just come off quite simply. Um, I've made a couple of marks on the bottom, which is a tip I got from the last guy that I saw take one of these apart. A guy called John, and his channel is Joe R. Non, J-O-E-R-N-O-N-E. -E. I'll put a link to it down in the bottom, but watching that video gave me a huge insight into how to take this apart. And that just pops off like that, and we can see the next part of the diaphragm. So this part needs to spin round, or this plate needs to spin round to remove itself from this key under here. You can see this is keyed with a hole in this side and a pinch point around that side. So this just needs to twist. But to get into that, we're going to have to release a couple of other pieces. Now on this side, there's this big seal, and that's pulling this down onto that plate at the moment. So you need to just fold that seal inside, and then hopefully these will just come apart a lot easier. Well, we've got the seal off, but this plate is still not moving. And the one that I was watching on YouTube from John, his diaphragm is sitting way further out, and he can get into the back of it a lot easier. And this one isn't playing that game. When we've gone to have a closer look and put it in the vise, it actually looks like this crack continues all the way to the bottom. So even if we could get this apart, and we could try and redo it, we're going to have to get new parts to refurbish it, which I don't have, I can't get hold of, so I'm going to have to use a rebuild service in the USA. Well, once again, the Thunderbird beats me, and with the weight of that brake booster, it certainly feels like I've taken a bit of a beating. But at least we've managed to catch up from where we were last time and get the calipers back together. Yep, I've paid penance for my remarks on how, easily, how easy and simple the brake rebuild would be. We've got the calipers back on, and everything's looking good down there. Yes, so if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. Check out shop.pedalbox.show for merch, which actually neither of us are wearing currently. And you can always jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow and support us there for as little as a dollar a month. All of our tiers get access to the Discord server where you can chat to us, ask us questions, and generally keep tabs on how we're doing. We'll see this car again sometime. Maybe we'll get some more of the bodywork back together, but until then, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.